Okay. Now, R is given by this formula, is given in MF26. So what's good? Yes? Can we calculate this? Use this formula? Yes. What this means, I explain term by term, okay? Thank you. What this means is summation x1 means x times x1, y1, one, one term, plus x2, y2, plus x3, y3. That's summation x1. So what's good? Summation x very simple. x1 plus y2, x1 plus y, x2 plus x3. Summation y, simple. X y1 plus y2 plus y3. N is the number of points. That means in this case, my example N is 3. Summation x squared means what? x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared. Correct? Summation x, you got summation y squared is y1 squared plus y2 squared plus y3 squared. Of course, now I'm talking about three points. Very easy. Not, not that difficult to calculate. But can you imagine, they, can you take a look at example one? There are so many points there. Let's say I want you to calculate by hand. I'll be quite cruel if I ask you to calculate by hand. Okay? So good news is that the calculator can calculate that. The calculator can calculate that for you. So, which is where we stopped. Here, okay, what we can do is we refer to the table in example one, which is page. I suggest we do this, okay? You flip your page to um, page, page 68, okay? And then you refer to my screen. You enter it, all these values into GC, okay? And make sure you can get this. How do we do it? You stat, edit, you enter all these values into your GC, which we did last week. The GC can help us calculate all your summation x, summation x squared, summation x y, blah, 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 blah. To obtain the value of R. I'm going to choose, randomly choose one person to show me your screenshot, okay? You all better do now. Don't ha ha ha. Okay? How do I calculate R? After you enter this, you go to stats, calculate, four. You refer here, this is your, my stat calculate four, which is your linear regression A plus B. X list, you leave it as y, L1, Y list, you leave it as L2. You calculate should be able to get 0 0.917. You should be able to get 0 0.917. This tells us the strength of the correlation. Ready? Ready, R? Not ready, raise your hand. Okay, okay. Make sure you can get this screen now. Huh? Ready? Better pause. Keep saying. Between a pregnant mother's BMI and her newborn's birth weight. Keywords to note, you must say that it's strong because it's close to one, it's strong. You must say it's positive because it's close to close to one and not close to minus one. You should say linear because R measures the strength of the linear relationship. R only measures the strength of the linear relationship. Whether it's quadratic or not, R cannot measure. Follow. So you must say these three things. Strong because it's close to one or minus one. Positive, because it's close to y and not minus 1. Linear is because you, you use r. r is the linear product moment correlation coefficient for linear relationship. Alright? Um, 
so if you want to be a bit more uh, um, long-winded, we slip add one more line. We say this means that as the mother's BMI increases, the newborn's birth weight tends to increase at a constant rate. Okay, can? Let us now take a look at B. Example 2B. The question actually gives us all your summation x, y. You just substitute in into a formula. Just good news, this is given in tw MF26. Just refer to it. You just retrieve this formula out. You plong in all the values. You can calculate your 0 0.823. Not difficult. Okay? Not difficult. Okay? This is given in MF26. Now, This R measures the strength of the linear correlation only. Now, you want to study, you cannot just say because it's close to 1 or close to negative 1, therefore confirm it is linearly correlated, strongly co linearly correlated. You must use it with a scatter diagram. You must use it, use R in conjunction with a scatter diagram. I will show you why. Example 3. Let's take a look at these values. Don't need to use GC on your own. Let's take a look. Because the, the, the it's printed for you. Minus 2, 4, minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. The question asks us to calculate R. Calculate R and draw a scatter diagram and then briefly comment. So three things you need to do. Calculate R, scatter diagram, and comment. So we calculate R. By GC, R equals to 0. Then you say, oh, R, you comment on it, you say no linear correlation. Correct? No linear correlation. Fair enough? Even from the scatter diagram, it looks like there's no co linear correlation. No linear correlation. I again want to stress this word, linear. Because by using R, you're only measuring the strength of the linear correlation. But if you take a look closely at the points here, They all lie on a quadratic graph. It doesn't mean that X and Y are not related. X and Y are related. It's just not linearly related. From the diagram, it shows that it's not linearly, linearly related. And furthermore, since R is zero. But there is a non-linear relationship. Yeah? Okay, Ken? So R tells us the strength of the linear relationship only. So R equals to zero means that there's no relationship. Either means there's no correlation or the variables are related in a non-linear manner. Non-linear manner is what we see up there. Let's look at B. 3B. Okay. If you've got a bit of time, you can enter the values in, but never mind. Let me assume that we all do this. 0 0.862. Okay, 0 0.862. Okay, you've got B, your table. What do you think you should deduce from a value 0 0.62? You should say, oh, okay, quite close to 1. Therefore, there is an indication of a strong positive linear relationship, correlation. Right? Makes sense, right? You say close to 1, ma. Makes sense. Then the question asks us, okay, now you scatter, draw a scatter diagram. You draw a scatter diagram. <laughs> Now tell me what is wrong with this scatter diagram now. What can you say about scatter diagram? Look. Okay, now after copying, I just look up, okay? 
you got a value very close to one, close to one, not bad, 0 0.62. You say positive, strong positive linear relation, correlation. But upon drawing a scatter diagram, you realize this, that other than this point outline, this outlier here, the nine points here are not related. And it's the X and Y are not related. Correct? If you exclude this outlier, correct? It's nine points. There's no correlation between the two variables. So this point is what we call outlier. This affects, seriously affects our value of R. So if you don't sketch the scatter diagram, you may wrongly assume that there is a positive linear relationship. This could be a reading error. Yes, you do science experiment, you do experiment, maybe you have a reading error. Correct? So without this outlier, there is no relationship. So must be careful, huh? The further this point away, the further this point is away from this cluster of points, the further this point is away, away, away the larger is the R. The closer this R is to one. Makes sense, huh? Oh, makes sense. So be very careful. So this is what we call an outlier. That point is called outlier. All okay. So, moral of the story, a value close, a value of R close to 1 or minus 1 doesn't necessarily mean that there's a strong linear correlation. You must still refer to the scatter diagram. Okay? You must still refer to the scatter diagram. Example 4. For the sample in figure 1, state an approximate value for the linear product moment correlation is on R. What do you think is the value of R? You write down? You write down? Guess, uh. never mind. Come. Write down R equal to what? Uh, no absolutely correct num number, la. don't worry. La. I didn't ask you to calculate, just estimate only. Okay? What do you think? Share the, your friend next to you. Can? Okay, so I tell you my answer. Okay, my answer. It, anything from uh, between negative 0 0.7 to 0 0.9, negative 0 0.9, I'm fine. Okay, you put negative 0 0.8, negative 0 0.7, negative 0 0.75, negative 0 0.85, doesn't matter. Okay, can? Anything from negative 0 0.9 to negative 0 0.7. I'm fine, so I put negative 0 0.8. Okay. Because there's no calculation, just an estimate. Okay? All okay? This is an estimate. Makes sense, huh? Because you look at the diagram here, definitely it must be negative number or because it's downward sloping. Yes? Negative negative number. It's part two that is a bit tricky. The value of R in sample in figure 2 is positive 1, is 1, because it's like perfectly on the street. Explain why this need not imply, thank you, um, a re re linear relationship holds for the entire population. Keyword, entire, for the whole population. What happens is you have collected how many points? One, two, three, four, five. Five, sem five points only. Five samples, five data from the sample. The question asks us to meet, not, does not necessarily imply that a linear relationship holds for the whole population. Just like I say, example only, there is a strong positive linear relationship between your H2 econs and H2 men. Okay? I say I claim. Why I say that? I say, okay, because I pick five of you, I plot the points, five of you, points H2 men and H2 econs are like that. Therefore, I say all of you should be like that. Does it make sense? Not necessarily, right? Correct? Just because I pick five, there's a very nice linear relationship 
doesn't mean the entire population is like that, right? So the explanation is it could happen by chance. I randomly pick five, I could happen by chance. It really it could be it could be by chance. Because it's a very small sample. It's a very small sample. All okay? Now, next part. In mathematics here, we, what we learn here is to say, oh, okay, I want to investigate how strong X and Y is. Correct? You can say, oh, okay, if there's a high between two variables like that, now we talk about cause and effect. It doesn't necessarily mean that one causes the other. I give you an example again. Maybe I put it down, this one, as H2 math and H2 econs. Does it mean that you are very strong in math, it will cause you to be stronger in econs? Not necessarily. I give you more ridiculous examples. Show you this one. Spurious correlation, uh, spurious, uh, seemingly true, but it's actually not true. Spending on uh, science, space, and technology, suicide by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation. That's the blue one. Three, uh, black and Does it mean that one costs the other? With one increase, the other also increase, ma? Right? Number of people who drown by falling in the pool. Film Nicholas Cage appeared in. Nicholas Cage. Then say, oh, increase, then decrease, increase, increase. Does it mean they are related? One causes the other. Nicholas Cage uh, film more, then that's why more people drown. <laughs> per capita cheese consumption. And number of people who died by becoming tangled in their big sheets. Does it mean that one caused the other? <laughs> no. But there is a statistical relationship. This one increase, the other increase, ma. So be careful. So when we study statistics here, all we say is R measures the strength of the correlation, but it does not mean that there is a cause and effect. There may be many reasons besides this other than cause and effect. Follow what I'm saying? Yes? All right? That's the most important thing I want to draw. Huh? We, in here, we only study that it's a relationship. That's all. We cannot say there's cause and effect until we study the context. Okay.